Okay, so music in cars. It's been around almost as long as music has been broadcast. In the 1930s, the cars were slow, so every journey took a while. Cars get faster, average journey gets quicker, yes, but mostly longer, because now we can go further. Driving requires concentration, but in most cases, anything over 20 minutes, assuming you're not driving a rat car in the rain, is, well, boring. We need entertainment. TV's been invented, but that's out because A, it's the size of a dog kennel, B, the signal feed is far too volatile, and C, well, watching TV while you're driving doesn't make the top 100 smartest things to do on a journey. Basically, anything that distracts the driver is bad, so that brings us to music, and that means radio. No one's invented MP3 yet. An AM radio fits neatly in the dash, feeds a speaker, no one's invented stereo either, and we have a happy and entertained driver. Now, let's race through the next 80 years. Cars and the broadcasting and recording media are among the fastest growing technology industries of the century. And all in all, all along, they are nodding to each other. AM radio becomes FM. Then we start to think about listening to our own music. 8-track? Cassette? Record players? Uh, no. CD player in the dash, CD player in the boot. Now you can load up to 6, maybe 10, sometimes more of your favourite CDs and have them available in the car all the time. But it's still not enough. The more we have, the more we want, and we don't have 10 CDs, we have hundreds. So a CD changer that's the size of a dog kennel. I think we've covered that. We need a music format that could compress thousands of songs like, well, I don't know, um, MP3? And a hardware that can store it all in a really small place, like maybe an iPod? Other MP3 players are available and then integrate it into the car. Okay, job done. You've got all your music in the car. Nothing more to worry about, right? Wrong. You've got all the music you own, but you don't have any of the music that you don't. So we're back to broadcast, and that means back to radio. But now you're used to choice, lots of choice. So where can you get an almost infinite number of radio stations playing every genre, giving you quite literally all the choice in the world? You need some sort of information superhighway, like the internet. The internet broadcasts over a quarter of a million stations because it's quick, it's cheap, and it's easy to do, so anyone who wants to share the love, well, does. So if we can get internet radio into the car, we have all the music we own and all the music we don't. Can't get much more choice than that, so that's the goal. Right, so what do we need to get internet in the car? Internet is computers, so we'll need a mouse, a keyboard, a screen, 10 metres of cabling, uh, well, we could be in trouble here, and an internet connection. Look, everything's smaller these days. We'll come back to the equipment in a second, but no internet connection, no internet radio. Internet comes down a phone line and we plug into it, but what about mobile phones? Same thing, no wires must be possible. A smartphone can get the internet wherever there's a 3G network, and a smartphone can come into the car with you. You can make your smartphone talk to, for example, your computer to give you internet on the run. That's called tethering. So if we can make it tether to something in the car, well, that's internet in the car. Done. Good news, except that now we have the whole internet in the car, all 750 gillion bits. We need to sort out what we want and make it easy to control because sorting through 250,000 internet radio stations while you're driving makes watching the TV look like a positively safe option. Now in the car, we know we have speakers and a radio which can control different audio sources, so we plug the phone into the radio, right? Uh, no. Three things. A. Plug it in where. B. Wires. No, we don't do wires anymore. We tether. And C, well, I'm sorry, but nothing's that simple. Let's start with the wires. Every smartphone has Bluetooth, so once we have the phone in the car, we could Bluetooth the internet to, um, to, yeah, we'll come back to that. But we're still transferring the whole internet, so we need something to select and control it, and we would like that to be smaller than a dog can. We've got a radio. Any good? Well, maybe. It has controls and a display, and you're used to using it, so that's a start. The controls are not set up for what we need. We need to put something between the radio and the phone that can sort all this out for us. 
Imagine we had something about the size of a car key that plugged into a USB port in the car and we could tether to the phone and then connect to the radio by Bluetooth. Then imagine that before you put it into the car, you could plug it into a laptop or computer and it would automatically bring up a website that let you choose the internet radio stations that you wanted to listen to and load them onto the device. This clever little thing would then sit in the car and turn the information superhighway into a series of MP3 files that your radio understands. So much so, it'll even bring up the name of the station in the radio display. If you want to change stations, push next, and there you go. But what if you don't have a smartphone? Everyone has a smartphone, don't they? Oh, okay. In that case, Imagine there's a USB port on this clever little thing that you can plug a 3G USB interface into to give it the internet direct. Yes, it'll cost you a little bit each month for your data, but it does mean you don't have to have your phone there all the time. No smartphone, no problem. Imagine you could do all that. Imagine a Densian web radio. Imagine going to densian.com forward slash web radio to find out more.